There you go. Okay, so welcome everybody. We're super excited. Another year, a new year. So welcome to all the new families and welcome back to everybody who hasn't been in school in it feels like forever, like six months, uh, especially for those who haven't been in camp. I know I went through some of what the new year is going to look like in our previous Zoom, but now that we solidified setting up all the classrooms and going through so many more um, meetings with DCF and all, some changes, not too much, most of the stuff stayed the same. But now that I can tell you sort of firsthand what it's gonna look like in the classrooms, because we tried it out, we played with it, and, and things are, are all set and ready for you guys for tomorrow. So I'm gonna go through the presentation. We'll talk as much as I can about everything that's going on um, and add as much notes in there as I possibly can to cover it all. But at the end, I will open up for questions. That way, um, at the end, if whoever wants to leave can, can check out and um, you won't miss anything. So we are ready for a new year. We're excited. There's so many things going on. Hopefully all of you have saved my number already. So you're getting the broadcast messages and that's how you know about this today. Okay, so the first thing is communication. Um, as in the past, we're gonna use WhatsApp groups for the classes. We are gonna do a little bit of a change this year into, into how we used to do the class broadcast. It used to be a broadcast. Now we're gonna open them as a class group. So you don't have to worry about not getting the messages and them coming in from the teacher from her private number, but it'll be more of a group, but we will only allow the admins, which will be the teachers to post. So in order, you won't be able to respond and talk to each other within that group. It'll only be the teacher posting and keeping in touch with you guys about what's going on in the classroom. If you want to respond, you can private message the teacher and respond that way. So all um, communication with the parents or most communication is done that way. We have the broadcast where I send general school messages. I'll put the school monthly menus on there. Any updates that are happening within the classroom will post on there. And then each class will have their own broadcast their own WhatsApp group with their teachers to share pictures and um, details of what they're learning within the classroom environment. We also post everything on the website. So hightotsflorida.com. Anytime there's an updated menu or forms that you need or the supply list or the COVID policies, school year calendar, all those forms can be found on the website under the parents tab. So you can always refer to it from there as well. Okay, so if you need to reach school, um, I know that you're all gonna have the teacher's phone number because you're gonna have a, the WhatsApp group with your teacher, but we ask that you really respect the fact that it's a teacher's private cell and that the fact that we don't want the teachers using their cell phones during the day because we want them, especially, especially during the day when they're with the kids, we don't want them on the phones and so they're not checking their communication with you guys during the day especially um, in the morning when there's no break. Sometimes the teachers will take their break and they'll have that half an hour and they can look back at messages. But if you really wanna get in touch with the teacher during the day and there's something important you need the teacher to know regarding after who's picking up your child in the afternoon or something that's happening at the end of the day or during the day or you have a question you needed to ask, the best way to get in touch is through the office. And Mushki will answer at the office or myself. If you need to reach a teacher, we can either pull the teacher out of the classroom if it's important, or we can pass on a message to the teacher that way. If it's not important to be dealt with right away, then you can send the message to the teacher. And when they have a moment, either during break or at the end of the day, they'll schedule a meeting to talk to you over the phone. Um, email is also a great way to contact if you can't reach us at the office right away by phone. Moshki um, at Florida or Endi at Florida are both emails that we're using that you can communicate with us and we're um, on top of the emails that way. Okay, so that's communication. Okay, drop off and pick up procedures. So this year, um, there's obviously not gonna be any parent, parents able to come into the school building for the start of the school year aside from orientation. And that's why we felt really important that you come to orientation either Thursday, Friday, because that's going to be your time to be able to see the classroom in person, meet the teachers, get to know what the classroom looks like and who the teachers are in that classroom and give your child an opportunity to adjust. Hang on, I'm just going to mute. If you join in your and you're not on mute, just mute, your, mute yourself. Uh, that's going to be your opportunity to see the classroom, see the teachers and um, and, and give that your child that opportunity to adjust without you being able to come in every day and drop them off. So 
during carpool time, it's really important that the parents dropping off wear a mask. We are going to be coming close to your car to do health checks and temperature checks, and the teachers are going to be coming to the car to take your child out of the car. So whoever's dropping off should wear a mask or a shield at drop off. An administrator, so either Mushki, myself, or Donald, our security guard, are going to approach your car as you arrive. They're going to be wearing a mask and they're going to greet your child at the car. They're going to, first thing they're going to do is a temperature check. So we need to check that your child does not have a fever of 100.4 or above. If they do, we're not going to allow them to come into the building that day. Many times the, ch the children, we had this over the summer when it was really hot that some of the kids were a little bit warm. We'll ask the parent to pull their car up or over to the side and turn the air on and let, let the child sit in the car for a few minutes and we'll do a second temperature check to make sure that it's not just the temperature in the car or outside or um, before we don't allow them into the building. We're also gonna do a daily health check and those are basically four questions that we're gonna ask you every day. We're gonna be doing this through a Google form. Um, we're gonna send a link to the Google form through the WhatsApp group. And basically you're just gonna click on that Google form and you're gonna answer yes or no to the four questions. It's pretty simple, submit it. And when, we, when you pull up, we're gonna ask you if you answered no to any of the above questions. Um, if you did, then it means that you've been in contact with somebody with COVID or your child's having symptoms of COVID or somebody in your house tested positive for COVID. Those are basically the questions we're going to be asking or if somebody in the house has a fever. As you get used to that procedure, we might wean off that Google form and just ask you, has anything changed in your household in the last, since yesterday to make that process go faster. Once you've filled out that health check and you've gotten your temperature, your child's temperature taken, then there's going to be a teacher outside from each classroom who's going to take your child from the car. Now, here's where we're going to be a little different. We need the parents to help us out here because carpool is going to be a little slower with the temperature checks and the health checks. So we ask that the parents unbuckle their child from the car and take them out of the car. So you are going to be getting out of your car. You're going to unbuckle and take your child out and then hand your child over to the Mora, who's then going to take them into the classroom. As soon as they enter the classroom, they're going to wash their hands with soap and then they're gonna go into their side of the classroom, their pod. If you're late for drop off or pick up, you need to call us at the office because we're no longer gonna be outside for carpool. Um, carpool's from 8.55 until 9.15, that 20 minute window. We know in the beginning it's gonna take longer than that. So we're gonna give leeway for a longer carpool in the beginning. But if you pull up and carpool looks like it's finished, you can either get Donald to get our attention or you can call us at the office and meet either myself or Mushki will come out and take your child from the car and do the health and temperature checks for you. Um, afternoon pickup from 1245 to 1 and 315 to 330. So both afternoon pickups, whether it's half day or full day. Your child, we're going to be outside, myself and Mushki with um, the microphone, which is connected to our intercom speaker. We're going to call your child as you arrive and the teacher is going to bring the child out to the car to you and hand your child to you. You're responsible to buckle your child into the car um, and put on their seatbelts in their car. So they're going to hand the child to you, you buckle. Uh, it's really important during these drop off and pickup times. We know you don't want to be at carpool for a 25 minute window. And we definitely don't want to be standing outside for an hour doing carpool because it's super hot, especially with masks and shields on. So we ask that you don't use that time to do discussions with the teacher. Did she eat today? Or how was her nap? Or how long did she sleep? Or can you tell me about whatever? Or don't forget to tell that that's not the time for it. Um, you can always message the teachers and, and let them know any of your concerns before or after school. But don't do it during carpool so that we don't slow down the carpool. And also don't chat with each other during carpool while you're buckling your kid in the car. You're having a conversation with the car in front of you or behind you. And that slows down the carpool lane. You'll see that Donald's pretty much of a stickler for keeping the cars moving. And sometimes he's gonna be tough and he's gonna say, get in your car, move your car, you gotta keep carpool going. He's not trying to be mean. He's just trying to make sure that carpool runs smoothly. We are on Hallandale Beach Boulevard. So a lot of times if the carpool lane does go slowly, um, we end up with a backup on Hallandale Beach Boulevard and then you're gonna have a lot of honking from the cars on Hallandale. So we really need to keep it moving pretty quickly so that things don't get backed up. In the beginning for the first month of school, um, and I'll let you know when we're going to stop this. We're going to do a staggered drop off and just drop off, a staggered drop off. We know that the toddlers and twos take a little longer to adjust and sort of like go from their parents' hands to the teacher's hands, especially in the beginning when they're still crying and adjusting. And that's going to be a little bit harder than, you know, your three or four year old who's been in school already and just jumps out of the car and runs off with their Mora. So we're going to start with the threes and fours from 8.55 a.m. until 9.05. So you have that 10 minute window. We ask that you respect that time and sort of come between that time. 
um, and we'll have our threes and fours Mara standing outside. We also don't want to have eight teachers standing outside in the carpool line because that lends for less feet apart between the teachers and we're really trying to keep a social distance with our Moras from class to class. So this way we have four teachers out at a time instead of eight. So from threes and fours, 8.55 to 9.05. And then the toddlers and twos will be the second shift from 9.05 to 9.15. That's when those Moras will be outside. And then parents with children who have in both groups should use the second time slot. Um, and um, I, my, I, I'll be out there to help the older kids get off into their, to their classrooms. So we're gonna try it that way just to stagger it a little bit and see how that goes. So that's drop off and pick up. Okay, lunch and snacks. We are gonna continue doing morning snack, lunch, afternoon snack like we always do. Um, we've never done a family style setup, so we don't have to worry about the kids, you know, sort of taking from the same plate. Our mowers always serve the snack on individual plates. They, they give them all the portions of all the components of lunch or snack at once on their plate, and every child will have their own plate served to them. Everything we use is disposable, uh, so there's no concerns of things being washed, uh, and we throw everything out when we're done with it. Sippy cups should be sent daily for the children in the younger classes, especially like toddlers and twos that use specific sippy cups. We make, please make sure to label them properly so we know whose is whose and we're, we're gonna be very careful that the kids don't share. Um, we're gonna be handing it to them you know, after playground time, during meal times, and then collecting it back from them and, and storing them until they need them again. So that way the kids are not drinking from each other's. In the older grades where your child does not need a water bottle or a sippy cup, we use plastic cups for everybody and they throw those out after each use. We ask, especially now with COVID, but also in general, um, that parents don't send any food with their children during the school day. So if your child is still in the middle of eating their breakfast and they didn't have time to eat that morning and you're still in the car eating their, you know, their egg and the sandwich or they finished their bag of snack and they didn't want to leave, it's important that you keep that in the car and don't send them into the school with it because we end up with the children want to share with each other. That looks yummy. Can I have some of your cereal? Can I get a piece of your whatever? And uh, we, we don't want them sharing one, because of allergies, two, because of kashrut. Everybody has a different level of kashrut in their house, and so we really don't want the kids sharing among their classmates. And we also try to stay away from, you know, touching each other's food, especially with COVID. So help us out with that and uh, let them finish whatever they're eating at home or in the car before they get out of their car. If, of course, your child has a special diet, like they need soy milk or they can't have gluten or um, there are certain things that they cannot eat, speak with me. I know I spoke to a couple parents already. We definitely make exceptions to the rule there. We allow parents to send in, you know, snacks to stay in the classroom or soy milk that we label and we keep in the fridge and we use that in replacement of milk or things like that. Obviously, if a child is having a difficult time with the menu or not eating food, we're going to be in touch with you. So that way we can find a balance in how we can make sure that your child is eating or they have um, foods here in, in the school that they're going to eat. We're not, we're going to make sure nobody goes hungry. So work with us. Just don't send on your own, but just speak to us if there's anything that you have an issue with with food. Also remember that our facility is peanut and tree nut free. We stay away from all things nuts, uh, just in case there is any severe allergies. We do have some kids with allergies. So be careful if you're sending food from home because of any dietary reasons or for Shabbos party snacks, or there's a birthday party to make sure that nothing has nuts in it when you send it in. Um, to, when you come to orientation, if your child does have any sort of food allergy or um, special specialty in their diet, make sure to speak to your child's teacher and go through the menu so that they can, they know exactly what your child can and cannot eat and what needs to be replaced. Monthly menus are gonna be posted on the WhatsApp broadcast and on the website as well. So hopefully tomorrow I'm gonna to post um, the September menu for you. Okay, what to send to school. Um, clothing, it's really important that we have a change of clothing and not just one this year, we're asking that you send two changes of clothing, especially with the younger kids. Uh, especially because during now if a child um, I don't know, sneezes or gets any sort of bodily fluid on their clothing, we're going to change their clothing. So that way we don't have any worries about uh, with COVID, especially we're trying to be extra careful with something like that. But also children get wet, they spill their sippy cups on them, they drop their cup, they get 
sauce from the meat, meatballs all over their shirts. And if you only have one change of clothing and you forgot and we sent it home and you forgot to send another one, we usually end up having trouble and we have to lend clothing from somebody else and we're trying to avoid that this year. So please send two complete changes of clothing, underwear, pants, shirts, everything that they would need. Um, uh, you can put them into Ziploc bags and we'll keep them in their cubbies. Please label everything you send in. Okay, so if you're sending in a pair of pants, write your child's name inside. If you're sending in a t-shirt, you're sending a sippy cup, you're sending a backpack. The teachers try and remember everything and who they belong to, but especially in the beginning, it's really difficult. So if you can label things, it will help our teachers tremendously with lost and found. And then remember that it's preschool. So don't send your ch children in their best clothing, okay? Save all their designer stuff for at home. Send them in their cheap Target and Old Navy and Walmart t-shirts that they can get dirty because that is the goal here. We want them to get dirty. They're gonna be playing in paint. They're gonna be playing in the sensory. They're going to get messy and we don't want you to call and say, hey, my kid got paint on their shirt and it's their very expensive Tory sweater and it's not coming off and, and then we feel really badly. So keep the fancy stuff at home, send, us some, send them in the stuff that you don't care to get dirty. We also have school uniform shirts. So if you only have fancy stuff in your house and you wanna buy school uniform shirts, those are optional, you don't have to, but we do have that option at school. So you can purchase some uniform shirts and send them wearing that to school. Okay, diapering. The infants and toddlers should have a supply of diapers. I'm saying disposable. I don't think anybody here uses uh, cloth diapers, but we're not doing that. And wipes, sufficient for several weeks in school. So we ask that you send a case of diapers, a case of wipes, so that way we don't run out after week one or week two. And then the teachers will keep you posted um, when they run out and you'll send, replenish that stock. If you want a special diaper cream, you can send that in as well and write your child's name on it and we'll keep that in their cubby. Okay, nap time. The school's cot sheets must be used for nap time. Um, lots of times parents will try and send in their own cot sheet and that it's really difficult for the cots that we have because the, the cots stack very nicely one into the other and the legs go one into the other. So if you send a cot sheet from home that goes over the legs of the other cot and then we can't stack them and it's very unhygienic because your cot is now sitting in somebody else's cot legs and it's dirty from the floor. So we ask that you purchase the one from the school. It's $15. We have two sizes. The younger classes use a toddler. The older classes use a standard sheet. Those have special elastics that go right over the legs and that lets, allows us to stack the cost really nicely. We put the child's name on it. And then every Friday, we're gonna send it home for you to launder and bring back on Monday. Remember to bring those back also. If you don't have one, we're gonna give you another one from the office and then charge you for it so that your child is not sleeping directly on the cot. You can also send in a small blanket, okay? Don't send the blanket off your child's bed because that's really not gonna fit in the cubby. We need a small, very small blanket and a small pillow. It's just nap time. Um, so think about like airplane size pillow, not full bed pillow, something small. We store everybody's sheet, blanket and pillow in a big Ziploc bag in their cubby so that way it stays hygienic and things don't touch each other. But if you send in these giant things, it's very hard for us to store those and they don't fit properly in the cubbies. Also, you could send a stuffed animal or something that your child needs for nap time, you can send as well and we'll keep that with their nap stuff. Um, limit what you send and sizes that you send so we can really fit it in their personal cubby space. Okay, and supplies, um, you should have received the supply list. If you didn't, it's on the school website. Those are basic supplies. This year it's really important. We're not going to be sharing any supplies like we normally do. We used to do like a collective class markers and crayons and things like that. This year because of COVID, uh, we invested in getting every child their own personal sensory tray. Every child has their own personal sensory bin that they're going to be using as well as all sensory materials. So if they're gonna be doing sand, it's their own bag of sand. If they're doing Play-Doh, they have their own tubs of Play-Doh. They have their own kinetic sand. They have their own seashells and loose parts and shovel and everything they're gonna be using in the sensory bin. We, we bought each of the children their own things so that we don't have to sanitize between every child. And especially the things that can't be sanitized like Play-Doh and sand that you can't really clean. We want them to have their own so that we don't have a situation where we can't clean them between the kids. So as well as their basic supplies are gonna be going in their own supply box. So they have their own sensory bin, their own sensory tray and their own supply box. And in the supply box is gonna go their markers, crayons, scissors, glue. So everyone's gonna be using their own materials every time they need them. Um, so that way we avoid having to clean each glue stick after every child uses it. 
So you're going to bring all these things tomorrow or Friday to orientation with you and the, the teachers are going to put it in their cubbies and in their bins. Okay, parent connection at school. Now this is really going to be a tough one for us because we are a family school and we love that connection, the PTO events that we do, all the involvement with the parents that we normally have at school um, is sort of going to be on hold until we can we can invite parents back into school again. So, but that doesn't mean that we're not gonna celebrate Shabbos parties and birthday parties in school, of course we will. Birthday parties are gonna happen when your child has a birthday and we're gonna celebrate with, with them at school. You can talk to the teacher about when's the best time to schedule that. And we're gonna Zoom parents in either via Zoom or in, in FaceTime so that you can be present at your child's birthday party as well. You can share cupcakes or cake with the class just make sure it's from a reliable kosher bakery and that it's parv. Uh, it's very, we're very particular that it's parv just because we don't know if the children had meat that day for lunch or if it's, especially if it's an afternoon birthday. Um, and then we get into problems with chal yisrael, which our school only keeps chal yisrael, and that's a really difficult one with finding the right dairy products. So we ask that everything just stay parv. If you need recommendations of where to go, I'm happy to suggest any bakeries for you. You can always reach out to me and I can direct you on uh, where to buy for, for a birthday. Uh, goodie bags and extra snacks are really discouraged. The children do not need more than just a piece of cake or a cupcake. You don't need to send a whole slew of, of goodies and snacks for a buffet of, of treats at the table. We do welcome fruits if you wanna do that. That's always welcome. Um, and then we, they, they really do not need the goodie bags. If you want to do something for the class, we always, you can donate something in honor of your child to the class, a toy, a book, and we'll share it and we'll, we'll talk about how your child donated it to the class versus sending home with goodie bags. Shabbos part, and then once obviously we can invite parents in, we, 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 at, when we would love when the parents can come and join birthday parties back at school again, and we'll let you know as soon as that's happening. Shabbos parties also, we normally have an Abba and Ima in each classroom and that family joins on Friday for Shabbat because we're not having parents in right now. We're gonna start just to get the kids on the Shabbos party routine. We're gonna have them learn the routine of the Shabbos party in the classroom. And then we're gonna have a Shabbos Abba and Ima sign up sheet. The teacher will let you sign up for a Shabbos Abba and Ima for that week. So your child will be the Abba or Ima of the class. And then when your child is Abba or Ima, you're gonna send in what we normally would have brought with you and celebrate. So it's going to be a bag of challah rolls, and the teachers will remind you this, a small grape juice and a healthy treat to share with the class. So we will let you know, you know, this week, your, your child is going to be the Shabbos Abba at the class. Please send in the following items to share with your class, and we'll celebrate Shabbat. Mid-year, hopefully, as soon as we're allowing parents back in, we'll resume our regular Shabbos parties where families can join us every Friday, and um, hopefully everybody will get a turn to do both um, and so parents will be able to join for a Shabbos party during the year as well. Okay, social distancing and pods. Somebody wrote on this one. Um, okay, so this one is the fun one for this year. I was very nervous about how we are going to create pods within our classroom environment. This is something that we never had to do before and obviously is the, the biggest point of stress for, for parents and especially for the school because we want to accommodate as many children that want to come, but we still want to remain in small pods according to licensing, and we have to use that classroom space that we have. So the teachers did a phenomenal job this week restructuring the classroom environment. Every classroom is split using furniture down the middle, and we're very lucky to have long and narrow rooms, which made it really fairly simple to be able to do. So we use some of our furniture that created um, center spaces, and then we have a panel that's almost like a like a clear wave panel that we use as a doorway. It's attached only on one side and it swings open and closed like a door. So there will be two. Okay, so we also move the cubbies outside into the hallway this year. First of all, so that the children's personal stuff is outside and not brought into the classroom environment, which also helps, you know, the germs from the home. Um, it also gave us for more space within the classroom environment. So basically both sides of the classroom have different centers. Um, we didn't recreate many classrooms within the classroom, but every, both sides of the room have different centers. So one might have the housekeeping and the library and the math center and a block center, as well as obviously tables and chairs and a carpet. And the other side of the room might have the science center, also a library, um, manipulatives and blocks on that side. And the classroom, your, the class list is split into two pods. The children are gonna arrive and they're gonna they're going to spend the day on their side of the pod. 
So if it's a classroom of 12 kids, there's going to be two pods of six. Six children are going to be on this side of the classroom and six children on the other side of the classroom. And each side of the classroom has a mora with those children. Okay, they spend the entire day on that side of the room. At the end of the day, we're going to sanitize the classroom. We properly clean it with the company and we use a fogger with a special sanitizing solution that we're going to go through every classroom and sanitize each room. The next day when the children arrive, they're going to swap sides of the room. Okay, so the six children that were on the right side yesterday, we're now be on the left side and vice versa. So the kids get the benefits of both sides of the room, as well as both teachers. Okay, so whereas one teacher might be on one side today and the other side tomorrow, the kids are going to swap the other day. So that they're going to get both moras and both sides of the room. So really what we're doing in, in essence is your children are going to remain with the same pod of children. Okay. So that group of children is not going to mingle. The six kids on this side of the room and the six kids on this side of the room are not going to mingle with each other. They're never going to play with each other. They're not going to be in the playground together. They're not eating lunch at the same table. They each have their own table, their own playgrounds times. And, um, and they're going to stay on their side of the room. The teachers, however, will swap from side to side. So basically your child is going to be exposed to their six or seven kids in their group plus the two moras of the class. So that stays smaller than the pot of 10 that the licensing was allowing for. Okay, each class is going to remain within their class only. So this among the classrooms as well, um, the, the teachers and the kids from each classroom are not going to be mingling with the other classroom. So, you know, EC2A is never going to mingle with the EC3 class. And the mores from EC2 are, are never going to go into the EC3 classroom to hang out or, or, or spend time in that room. So that way, if there is a case of COVID, we're really um, limiting it to that one classroom environment. And we can, we know for sure that we haven't mixed the kids from room to room. Uh, the toddlers are the only classes that are not going to have these two pods. We did this only for the twos, threes, and fours. The toddlers have their own classroom with eight children and two moras, and they have the entire classroom space. It's, it's not split. So they just have a smaller classroom with their two moras. Okay, so that is the pods. We also created more playground spaces. In our, normally, we had um, one big playground, then our back alley, which is a, which was another playground area. Now we turn the, the two playground spaces into four playground spaces. So we have the area that's our, our playground structure. Then we have the grassy area next to the playground structure, which is divided with a fence. And then we turn the back alley into two playground spaces and we bought new toys and created different spaces for each of the kids, each of the groups of kids. And so let's say when the two-year-old class is out in the playground, one two-year-old class is going to be in the main playground area. So six of the children with one mora are going to be on the playground structure, while six kids and their mora are going to be on the grassy area. So they're both in the same area at the same time, but they're split with that fence in the middle, and they're each using their different space with their teacher, and they're not mingling. But that way, the teachers are watching both sets of their, their kids at the same time. And let's say the other two-year-old class is in the back alley, same thing. We divided it with a, um, a piece of furniture so the kids won't mingle with each other, but we'll have six on the right side of the alley and six on the left with the different playground equipment that we have out there. So they're out in the same, they're out at the playground at the same time, the classroom, but they're not in the same space as each other. And the kids are going to rotate between those four playgrounds. Everybody's going to get the benefit of all four playgrounds from during the week. We're also going to have Mauricio who's our handyman with the fogger, who's gonna be after every half hour that the four groups are out on the playground, is gonna go and do a sanitizing of the playground using the fogger. So between groups that come out into the playground, the playground is gonna be sanitized with the fogger. And so there's no germs between groups. Um, and when you visit, you can also visit the different areas of the playground tomorrow. We've created, um, we have in the back like the community play things, big, big wooden outdoor blocks, and we have some new structures, the climbing dome, and we have uh, teeter-totters and some structured houses and climbing spaces. And um, I'll, I'll send some pictures also if you don't have a chance to visit the playground, because I don't want parents to really mingle. So you can peek out at the playground, but don't spend time with other families in the playground area. Um, we also have a, a beam for the kids to walk on, and we created in the grassy area, there's bikes, but there's also basketball hoop and soccer nets and balls for the kids to play sports out there. So we've created some new spaces and some new toys for the kids. Okay, health and safety protocols. All staff and students will verify daily that they are symptom free and will verify that they have no, had no known contact with somebody who has COVID. That's gonna be that daily health check. 
Children with any of the following symptoms may not come to school without exception. So if you have a cough, that's not your normal cough, okay? So it's not, your child doesn't normally have a cough and now they have a, a cough that doesn't sound good, reason to keep your child home. Fever, 100%. And this one is gonna be our strongest point um, because this is the, the biggest factor with COVID. If your child has a fever of 100.4 or up, you cannot send your child to school. Don't give them Tylenol. Don't tell me that they're teething and you know that they're fine and it's just teething because they're fine. No, if your child has fever, you must keep them home for 48 hours, okay? You need to watch to make sure that that doesn't develop into something that may be COVID. That is our biggest concern. Sore throat, that's also a concern. Bad diarrhea, body aches, chills, anything that seems to you like your child is under the weather or might have something concerning, please keep your child at home. It's really important that we work together as a school community and a school family to make sure that we are keeping each other safe. Because if you send your child to school with one of these symptoms, because you're not sure it's COVID or it doesn't seem so bad, and then they develop into COVID, you've just exposed the entire class. And now instead of just having your child stay at home for whatever long, however many days it takes for them to feel better and be symptom free, now we're gonna expose the entire class of 12 or 14 kids to this, and now everybody's gonna to have to stay home for the two week period. So it might be as annoying as it is for you to keep your child home for two days, it's better that you watch and observe and you make sure that it's really nothing um, before you send your child back. With fever, we are going to only allow your child back into school with a doctor note, okay? So I'm not a doctor and I don't know, and, and most of the parents here are not doctors to know that my child is teething or has a sore throat and that's why they have, they have fever or um, they, you know, they're just, it's fine, it's just like a stomach bug. A lot of times you try and diagnose our kids on our own and we don't know that that's the case. So if your child has fever, they must get a doctor note before coming back. We're gonna allow the doctors to make the decisions whether they think it's strep throat, not a concern, or a reason to get to, uh, tested for COVID. If your child comes back to school with a note from the doctor that says they're fine or they're COVID free, then they're welcome to come back to school. Without that, we're gonna to have to be really strict that they cannot come back to school unless they get a doctor note. If a child becomes ill while at school, the child's gonna be brought to a separate room um, by the office. We're gonna call you to come pick up your child and your child has to remain home for 48 hours without symptoms before returning to school. This again, if it's fever, they're gonna need a doctor note before they come back. Okay, sanitizing. So please also be mindful. We used to say 24 hours, we've upped that to 48. Um, many schools are doing 72, we're doing 48. But we're really gonna be strict with the 48. So even if you call me and say, my kids didn't have fever the whole day yesterday, they're fine, they're ready to come back to school, I'm still gonna keep to the 48 hour rule. So you might have your child home for a day doing fine and we're, we'll be happy to know that they're feeling better. But it's, we're gonna stick to the 48 hours. So if you send your child home on Tuesday, with fever, they're not gonna to come to school on Wednesday or Thursday. They'll be ready to come back to school Friday if they've been feeling better. Okay, sanitizing supplies and objects. This is gonna be something that we're gonna be uh, on top of, especially now we wanna make sure, and we know that the kids are playing with each other, they're in the same classroom, but we're still gonna be extra careful with sanitizing all materials that the kids play with. So any materials that the kids play with or any toys that were played with in the classroom are going to be sanitized before they're put back on the shelves. So if it's something that we can't just wipe down and put back or spray with sanitizing spray, it's gonna be taken to the counter and at nap time or at the end of the day, the teachers are gonna soak them with soap and water, those toys and lay them out to dry and then put them back into the classroom bins for the next morning for the kids. So if it's small toys that need to be washed, we're gonna wash those at the end of the day. If it's bigger toys like um, blocks or things that can be wiped down with a cloth wipe or sanitizing spray. We're going to do that before we put that back on the shelf. Each child, we talked about this, is going to have their own set of supplies and sensory materials, which is not going to be shared, and you'll see those tomorrow in their cubbies. We are going to stop using soft toys and dramatic play costumes, so we've eliminated um, most of the, some of the classrooms do have stuffed Torahs. Um, those teachers committed to washing those Torahs either putting a name on them so each kid has their own Torah or washing those on a weekly basis so that those get sanitized weekly. But there won't be any dress up clothing for the kids to share between themselves uh, until further notice. The classrooms and building will be sanitized using a fogger and clean nightly by our cleaning company. 
Children and staff are gonna wash their hands upon arrival at school. As soon as they arrive at school, everyone's gonna wash their hands before any meal time. So before any morning snack, lunch, afternoon snack, after they use the bathroom and after outdoor play. Um, and then our teachers are also gonna sanitize their hands every time they leave the room. We have a sanitizing foam um, dispenser in every classroom. So if they leave the classroom and they come back in, they're gonna sanitize their hands as well. Okay, COVID-19 cases. So. When a Chaitot's parent experiences direct exposure, um, we ask that you notify me immediately. If the parent tests negative and, is, and COVID is not suspected, then the child may remain in school. Okay, so if your parent in our school suspects that they have COVID or gets tested positive for COVID, that child has to stay home until their parents have, have confirmed that they are COVID free. If a Chaitot's parent or household member of a Chaitot student or staff member test positive. Chai Tots obviously again needs to be contact, con contacted immediately. It's important that you tell us right away so we can figure out the right protocol to do. The child or staff member is considered to have direct exposure and whether they themselves test negative or positive, he or she must remain home until 10 days from the onset of symptoms is completed. So if someone in your household has COVID, then you need to remain home for those 10 days after this, their, that person is symptom free because you are in direct exposure. So if your child, your nanny, your grandmother who lives in your house has COVID, your child must remain home for those 10 days. If the Chaitat student tests negative, the child must remain at home, but their school cohort remains co in contact. So if, if someone in your household tests positive, but your child tests negative, then your child still needs to remain home, but the rest of the class will not have to close. If a Chaitot student or staff member tests positive for COVID or COVID-19 is suspected, again, let me know immediately. We are mandated to report it to the health department immediately. So if it's somebody immediately in our school, a staff member or a child, we will contact the health department right away and they will determine the next steps of what we need to do. How long the child needs to quarantine, um, how, how many days we have to close the classroom to, to, clean up, to clean and sanitize before we allow the children back into the classroom. And that's gonna affect the entire classroom environment. Um, affected families will be notified immediately. So the health department is that will let you know as well, but the health department is also gonna call you to let you know that somebody in that class was, um, that was positive for COVID. So we're gonna let you know, they'll, they'll let you know as well. And then we'll let you know how long we need to quarantine that class for. If the class must close for 10 to 14 days, and that's still the DCF and the CDC are using both of those number days, the teachers will resume some teaching via Zoom and we'll keep you posted on that. But we will, we'll, we will turn that classroom into Zoom learning with some supply bags being sent home until that classroom can reopen. Okay, PTO. Uh, we always have a, a beautiful PTO group of moms and some dads who want to get involved in the school and help us plan events, after school activities, family events, things that happen within the school environment. Obviously now it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we don't want to completely eradicate our PTO. So we would love to still be able to do things like that within the school environment um, in some sort of virtual way. So if you're interested in getting involved in that and being creative and how we can do fun parent activities or school-wide family activities via Zoom or virtually, please get in touch with me and let me know and we'll get you on the committee. Right now, we're not gonna be doing any in-person activities in the school or after school. So we're not gonna be having any of our specialty teachers like Zumba, gym, drums. Currently at this time, we don't wanna have a teacher moving from room to room or from school to school, exposing our children to more people. Right now, our teachers um, are going to be doing gym and music activities with the kids on their own within the classroom environment. And then once we feel it's safe to bring in specialists, we'll start that up again, uh, as well as after school activities. So we're not going to be doing any of aftercare, pre-care or after school activities until we feel it's safe for the groups to mingle with each other again. Okay, student orientation. So. You should have all received an email with your student orientation time that is going to be tomorrow or Friday. Every family member got a 15 minute time slot per child to visit their classroom and to meet the teachers. We specifically left, we did a 15 minute time slot for you to be in the classroom. It's gonna be just your family, you and your child and whoever from your family you bring to that orientation and the Moras, that is it. 
You must come wearing a mask. Any adult that comes into the room needs to wear a mask when they arrive. The teachers are gonna be wearing masks as well. Um, you're gonna spend 15 minutes to get acquainted with the classroom, meet the teachers, talk to them about any concerns you might have or any um, health issues or dietary issues or allergy issues, and then also give your child an opportunity to get adjusted to the classroom environment, drop off their supplies, um, and walk around the room, see everything that's going on within the classroom environment. It's also important that you stop, and this is crucial, not just important, you must stop off, and the only way that you're gonna find out your class placement and your class number is if you stop in the office first and make sure that all your paperwork is complete. So if you have not sent me or Mushki or Tsipi a birth certificate, food program form, influenza form, swim central form, parent photo IDs, or your VPK form if your child's in the four-year-old class, and your child's file is not up to date. We need all those forms, okay? Birth certificates are the only things that you can, we've crossed over from last year. So if your child was in school last year and you gave us a birth certificate last year, that's already in the file. Everything else needs to be filled out again for this year. So we cannot use last year's health, health and vaccine form. Sorry, that's another one that I didn't tell you. Health and vaccine form from the pediatrician. We cannot use old forms. So influenza expires after a year. Food program expires after a year. So does Swim Central. So all the forms that you gave us last year are old. We must get new ones this year. If you haven't done that already, go to the last email we send you that has all the links to all the forms or go on the website because all the forms are on the website and print those all out tonight and fill them out and bring them with you to orientation. They'll make, your, it'll make it go way faster tomorrow for you. You come in and you say, here are the six forms that I'm missing. And I can say, okay, you're in classroom number nine. And then you'll go visit your teacher and spend that time at your orientation instead of spending that time in the office filling out paperwork. Okay, so it's really important that you bring those forms in. Uh, and then you're gonna head to the classroom. You're gonna spend 15 minutes there. We did leave a leeway of 15 minutes between each orientation visit to give the teachers an opportunity to clean and sanitize the classroom between every family that comes. So it's important for us, we have parents and adults from different families coming into the room. We are gonna use Clorox wipes and sanitizing spray to wipe down handles and any surfaces that you may have touched when you're in the classroom. You can help us out by not touching too many surfaces when you're in the classroom so we don't have to do a full deep cleaning. So we do wanna see you and we do wanna have your child to have that time in the classroom tomorrow. So we're looking forward to meeting all of you and hopefully you're gonna come with all your paperwork. Okay, looking forward to partnering with you for a safe year, together for a nurtured growth, learning and exploration. So we're really excited. We're excited to, for you, to introduce you to our team. Most of our teachers have been with us over the past few years. We do have two new teachers who have joined us this year, um, Galit and Adina Schwartz. You'll meet them tomorrow, but some of the, most of the faces that are here and in school, you, are, you already know, and we're really excited for another year together. Um, here's just, if you want to take a picture of this, if you don't have it, um, this is just a contact list. It's the school office number, so you can always reach us at the office. And then if you cannot reach us during the office hours, here is if you need to reach me or Mendy or after hours, um, or Mushki or the office after hours, these are the, these are the ways that you can reach us. My email, I also have my cell phone and parents are, are always welcome to reach me on my cell phone if they need to talk to me after, after school hours. Um, if you have questions on billing, um, Mendy does the billing. So he has billing at High Talks Florida. That's with all the financial stuff. If you need to discuss something with finances, that would be Mendy. And that's his email and that's his phone number. And then in the office, we're starting the year off with, without Sippy. Sippy's not going to be in the office for the first few months of school. She's staying home with her son and just to be available in case her kids' school closes. So Mushki is going to be in the office doing um, Sippy's job. So whenever you get emails that come from Tippy's email or Mushki's, it's Mushki that you're corresponding with. So she'll be at the front office uh, in our school office dealing with all that as well. And that is the end of our presentation. I hope I covered everything. I'm now gonna um, open it up to questions. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and I'll be able to see you and I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. You're gonna have to unmute yourselves um, when I get to you. So. Raise your hand if you have a question. I may not know all of your names, but I'm happy to answer all those questions that you may have. I have more than one screen, so I'm gonna scroll through it. I have a question, Cynthia again. Okay, okay, hang on. Okay. Go ahead, you know what, unmute yourself, good. Go ahead. Okay, 
So you said something about a, the birth certificate. We need that for a new child, like for example, a Aten who's going to start the toddler class. Yeah, he needs a birth okay. certificate. You make a copy. I don't need the original, obviously. Just make me a copy. Okay. Do you need our IDs again, even though we've been part of High Tots? If I have your IDs, that's I don't need that again. Those are things that okay. I've transferred from your old file. But a new birth certificate for a new student, I do need. Okay. Hi, Andy. Hey. Who's talking? Oh, Say who, who I'm talking to. Oh, hey. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? Can you, can you explain more or less like the situation? I mean, we all ended the school so abruptly, and even though we, we talk with our kids about it, like, it's going to be kind of weird to go back to school with a different teacher, with, like, such a weird setup and rules. For example, I you know my, my daughter is three and a half, and she's, like, I'm every, it's going to be so weird when, oh, you cannot talk to those kids, or you cannot play with the blocks today, or you cannot, and are the teacher like, did you guys train the teachers to be able to handle like the potential tantrums or like how to explain the situation? Yes, the absolutely. First of all, you're going to see when you come into the classroom that the furniture is set up in a way to create a half a room where it's not going to, it's not going to be easy for them to just want to walk to the other side of the room. It's not like it's an open space and they're going to want to walk over there and be like, oh, no, 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 you can't go there. It's going to be furniture. So they can't really go to the other side. But all of our teachers have created social stories to talk to the kids about what does it look like in the classroom environment? What does it look like to have two pods? How this is gonna work with switching the sides with the kids? And they're gonna talk to them. The entire first week of school is all about school class routines, school routines, and how does it work in the classroom environment? So they're teaching them everything from how do we line up to get to the playground, to how do we wash our hands properly, to how do we clean the toys up, to what does it look like with this new room environment? Um, and and what, what does it mean for us when we switch from one side to the other? So they're going to go through all that, and we're going to spend a whole week going through it until the kids feel like they're super comfortable. And also, like, you, you spoke with the teachers about, uh, like, about, like, being patient and trying to, like, I, I don't know if I'm the only one, but but I feel like this whole few months, I'm sure, affected many of our, of the kids, and and psychologically, we don't know the, the, the outcome of it. We will only know once once the kids arrive, but they might be more stubborn or more this or more that. And I just want to make sure, especially with new teachers, that they'll be like patient with them and help them through it and not get, you know, like upset or whatever. Our teachers have started um, in service on Thursday. Um, so Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we've had workshops on conscious discipline. And that's uh, very much a part of that, how to handle the social aspect of the children when ch children are having a difficult time, all the big emotions that they're gonna come into, how to recognize those emotions, how to help the children recognize their emotions and to work, them with, work with them through it. We did a lot of the Reggio environment within the classroom environment and that also incorporates a lot of that. So we've trained all the teachers, they know all the scenarios, we talked about how to handle the situations. I'll be around to make sure that I can help them. But we're, I mean, we, we're all, most of us, I mean, most of the teachers, I think if not all of them are all moms and they all know what the situation is like for their own children, as well as the kids coming into the room. And that was definitely something that we talked about um, during this service week. So we're, we're, we know it's a transition for all of them. We know everything is new. The mowers are gonna be wearing masks or face shields. We're gonna talk about what that looks like for the kids and what that feels like for the kids. Um, and we're definitely gonna walk them through all the different emotions that they may be feeling as they start the school year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And the and question, i oh, sorry. <laughs> Joanna, go ahead, because I don't know who else talked. You'll, okay. talk. I heard you saying that the kids will be on the pods, but then the next day they will be switching into the other teacher. Yes. How are you going to manage that? Because I, I feel like that will be spreading faster. Like, if they don't stick to one assistant, or I know the teacher will be back and forth and it's an open room, but if they're going to be switching all the time teachers, well, they're only exposed to their two teachers. So what's happening is if the only problem that was going to be is if, a, if one of the teachers is, is exposed to COVID. But if we're going to close down a classroom, we're going to be closing an entire classroom, not just a pod within a classroom. If somebody in the classroom, I mean, they're in the same airspace or breathing the same air, they are using the same bathroom. So they are within the same classroom environment. However, if a child in one of the pods has COVID, they're not exposed to the seven other kids on the other side of the room. They might be in the same room, but they're not playing with each other. They're not touching each other, not sitting at the same table. They're not playing with the same block. So it is way less exposure, even though they're in the same classroom environment. 
But the teacher going back and forth, sorry to jump in, it's Reina, I'm without the video, the teacher going back and forth, doesn't that expose the entire other pod? Right, if the teacher gets COVID. No, but if, the, if a kid in the other pod gets COVID and that teacher was in that pod and then the next day they have the other group of kids. Right, so if then, the teacher also gets COVID and then is in the other room, yes, it would, be, would have been exposing it to their group. But not necessarily if a child gets COVID doesn't mean that the teacher is going to get COVID. It's a secondary exposure, but yes. But if, for me, it's more important that the child, the, ch but the children in both groups get to experience both of the moras in the class and not one, one group gets the assistant teacher and one, one group gets the lead teacher. I want both groups to have both moras within the classroom environment. It'll also make for a more seamless transition when we don't have this capacity anymore and we open up the classroom to a full classroom environment. I want the, the kids to know both moras in the classroom environment. And if for I have a five months of the year, they only had uh, Maura Michelle, for example, and then suddenly we open it up and now there's a new Maura in the classroom that they don't even know their style, their teaching, whatever, it's going to be a little bit harder of an adjustment. But if they are exposed to both Mauras and they work as a team, even though they're on both sides of the room, it may be potentially more exposure, but it, it, it'll be much better for them socially adjusting. So are there are two teachers, two assistants and one teacher? Are there how many like teachers are in the room? I thought there were three. No, not now. The classrooms are smaller. Yeah. We have one teacher and one assistant in our toddler. Oh. Our twos have one teacher and two assistants. So we do still have three teachers within our in our twos room because there's a lot of diaper changing in there and there's a lot of emotions in the two-year-old room and we want to have extra staff there on hand. Our threes and fours each have one lead teacher and one assistant. Andy, it's Mushki Khazan here. Um, Let me find I you. Was wondering, hey, I was wondering about the um, Parsha and Olive base. I know you usually have for the older kids um, someone separate that comes in and does Parsha and yeah. Olive base. Um, so who's doing it this year? Morfani, um, that was always with us, is going to be teaching Parsha and Olive base in our fourth class. She is going to be wearing a face shield when she teaches the kids. So, so she's, still, she's coming in. Yes, it's going to be coming in. Okay. We've created, you. and you'll see tomorrow when you come see the classrooms or Friday, we've created the classroom in a way that um, the two carpet areas are on either side of the dividing furniture. Um, one of the pieces of furniture is on wheels, so we're able to move that piece of furniture again flat against the wall or out of the way, and that way the teacher can sit right between the two groups, the lead teacher, during circle time or during learning time, and the six kids can be sitting on their carpet and the other six kids can be sitting on their carpet on their side of the room with the teacher in the middle and she could be doing circle time for both groups at the same time. For me, it felt important that even though they're in two pods, they felt like they're in the same classroom. I want the kids to feel like they're a part of the same room and not like there's two classrooms going on in the same room simultaneously. So it's going to happen at the same time. Shabbos party, even though they're going to be on two different sides of the classroom, there's going to be a table here and a table there. They're going to be singing the Shabbos party songs together while the teacher leads it from one side of the room. So, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. The kids are going to be, let's say, six and six in the same class. Yeah. But what happens if one of the kids is going to have a friend in the other six and they see each other, but they can't play? So it's, are you going to also mix the kids together eventually? Or it's six and six and you cannot play with the other kids? Because that's... It's going to be six and six is in the same room and they cannot go on to the other side of the room. That is, that's how it's going to be. Eventually, we are going to mingle them. Yes, that is going to be the case. And that's why we have a lot of social talk about how this is going to be. The kids understand that there's COVID happening and they understand that they need to stay safe and they understand that we're going to explain to them that there's going to be two pods within the room and right now those pods are going to remain separate and they can say hi to their friends from the other side of the room, but they're not going to be playing together on the carpet or with the toys together or they're not going to be sitting at the same table area. Yeah. But you're not going to switch them around like the kids like every other week to yeah. switch the kids around? No. The kids are staying within their same pod. They're only exposed to their pod of six or seven kids. The kids are not going to be mingling. Not until the capacity changes and we open up the classroom to one big room. Okay. Can we do any, any friend requests for the pods? Sure. I mean, I, I pretty much know who I spoke to the teachers. We sat down with the, you know, we, we, I haven't finalized the pods yet within the classroom. The classrooms are finalized, but we're still finalizing pods. If you want to put in a request tomorrow with the teacher, you can do that. But I've spoken to all the teachers in the past that we know who's friends with who and who we need to make sure that they stay together and at least that the kids have, have friends within their pod. 
Mm -hmm. If you want to put in a request, you can do that tomorrow with the teacher. Yeah. Another question. I understand that the kids doesn't have to wear masks and the teachers are going to wear masks when they're in common areas, right? Okay, so let me talk about carpool, that. Bring that up. During carpool, kids have to get out of the car with masks until they reach their classroom or not at all? The children don't ever have to wear masks. That's not going to be our policy. We're going to make sure that the kids are not mingling with other kids during carpool line. So it's going to take them from the car and walk them straight to their classroom. Um, the teachers have to wear masks during carpool time. Uh, anytime that they're going to be around other Mora. So if they're going to be in the hallway, in the office, in the supply room, in my office, they always have to wear their mask. If they're in their own classroom and only their other teacher is in the room, they can take their mask off if they want to. Many teachers are going to keep their masks on or at least the face shield. Um, during circle time, they're going to take their mask or face shield off so that the kids can actually hear um, as they sing, they project whatever they're talking about. I don't want them to do that through a muffled mask or even, I want the kids to be able to see their faces and their facial expressions and to be able to hear the sounds of the letters or, or the words of the songs properly. And so during circle time, they will take their mask off. During diaper changing time and during meal times, they will be wearing their mask. So if they're gonna be in close contact with the kids changing their diapers or changing their clothing or feeding them, serving them meals and snacks, their, their mask is going to be on. Those are the mandatory, mandatory times that they have to wear a mask. The kids do not have to wear a mask at all. Hi, Andy. Hi. This is Shana Dowdy. Hi, how are you? Good, good, and you? Um, I have a, a question. I have, I'm actually going to be dropping off my daughter with her cousin. I mean, I'm the one dropping off and taking back home. So, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to just be the same protocol of drop off is just going to be double at yes. the same time yeah. and it's going to be i'm guessing the same teacher so it's just going to be me you know coming out of the car i'm buckling both yes and the mora is going to be order or okay. if there's another mora there i mean for you it works out that they're in the same class um mm -hmm. but if there's someone else that's doing a carpool or bringing two kids there'll be two moras out there to take them from from the car and take okay. them. great thanks you're welcome Anybody else have any questions? I don't see hands. So if you have a question, just like unmute yourself and say you want to talk or ask. You'll see, listen, this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. Obviously, we've put a lot of protocols in place about how hypothetically it's going to work. And then Monday, the kids come and hypothetically, it's not going to be hypothetical anymore. So we're going to have all these kids and we're going to have to see, you know, some things may not work as perfectly as we had envisioned in our minds and once the kids are there because it's a whole different ball game when you actually have people involved um, even though we've practiced it and tried it a million times um, and we might have to make adjustments as things progress you know so we'll have to you know this is not working we need to change this around a little bit or we need to come up with a system on how to make this better and things might change like that but um the good thing is we had summer camp to practice some of it. Um, some other schools are already doing what we're doing and they've already started. So I've been in touch with many directors of many schools who are doing the same things that we are. And so we've always, we've been, we've been in contact about what's working, what's not working, how they're doing it to make it better or things like that. So we're working with other directors to see how we can always improve uh, in the system. And then obviously with our teachers to find out what we can improve and fix to make it an even more seamless transition. Yes, go ahead. So uh, I'm a new mom. We have Judah, he's two, or he's going to be two. So I just wanted to ask for the sheets. They, do they come home daily or do they come home once a week to rewash and send back? They go home on Friday. So every Friday they pack up your sheet and your blanket in a bag and send that home with you. And then every Monday you send it back and they put it back on the bed. Okay, and do you want us to provide that Ziploc bag for this or, or is it something that the school has to provide? The school provides a Ziploc bag. So you just need to bring the blanket, the little pillow and buy a cot sheet from the office and then we'll set, we'll leave the Ziploc bag at school. We're going to send home your sheet and blanket um, in, a, in a shopping bag or your child's backpack if you have one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Andy. Andy. Yeah. Sorry. Who said Andy? My, my name is Julieta. I am a new mom as well. Hi. I have a I have a question. Sure. Um, I would like to know why 
it won't be mandatory for the Morot to use the, the face shield or the mask all the time while they are with the kids. I think because it should be mandatory all the time while they're with the kids. So Even, I mean, one of those or, or the mask or the shield. Right. Well, for the most part, the teachers are going to be wearing them because everybody wants to protect themselves and each other. Um, the reason it's not mandatory is because child licensing understands the need for young children to be able to see facial expressions, to be able to learn. Um, this is not 10 and 12 year olds who understand when you say something, you're, what your voice says or does or has a better understanding of uh, what you're saying through your mask. These are young children. They need to be able to see your face to be able to learn. Um, they need to be able to see when you're smiling, when you're happy, when you're talking to them. They need to be able to hear the words that A makes a, or B makes a buzz sound with a, a mask on. You can't hear that. You can't see that properly. And they understand. Understand, they understand that need for young children to be able to see your facial expression, to be able to hear the words properly without muffling out that sound. And so it was important that um, teachers in the, in the, preschool age um, are comfortable to be able to take that mask off when they're teaching. And that's pretty okay. much the time that the teachers are going to take them off. The other time will probably be in the playground when they're outside and they're going to be higher than the kids and maybe not in close vicinity. The kids are going to be running around. Um, each of the teachers have a, we, we bought school masks for the teachers and we have, they have a mask um, chain. So the mask is always going to be around their neck. If it's close to them, they're going to put the mask on. Um, if, if they're doing circle time and they want to be able to talk to the kids and they're sitting here and the children are sitting in chairs in front of them, they can okay. take the mask off their mouth and they can teach that way. Um, so it's always going to be available to put on and off, um, but they are going to be taking it off at times to be able to communicate with the kids in a clear and clear way so that and so the kids can see them properly. Okay. And that's not I understand. I understand. Thank you. And, the, okay. and one more. Are there any uh, Spanish speaker morot at PK3? Because, you know, my kid is new and maybe, you know, with the, he struggles a little bit still with English. Um, I'll message you after this meeting to talk about that with you. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments they want to talk about? Don't worry if you don't ask the right questions now and you have more questions tomorrow after orientation, you're welcome to stop by and ask them to me then or message me or call me. I will Andy. be available. Yes. Hi, it's Kathy. How are you? Hey, Kathy. I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, question. Are the morals going to be getting tested often? Are you requiring that or are you going to yes. be providing it to them? And All the of staff? our morals tested already. Last Thursday. And are you going to keep doing it often or? So we're not going to be doing it on a consistent basis unless we have a concern. If somebody was exposed to COVID or has any sort of symptoms, any of our morals have symptoms or fever, then they're going to have to retest. Okay. We're not going to just do it as a routine check, but we will do it if there's any concerns of any sort, like someone in their family or somebody that they were exposed to, or there's any symptoms that they're having, I will send them to get retested. Okay. And they have to Thank do you. their 10 to 14 day quarantine based on their, those results. Yeah. Also, I wanted to mention, I know this came up in the, in the previous Zoom. In the past, the CDC was requiring that anybody that traveled um, do a 14 day quarantine. They've lifted that um, mandatory quarantine for travel and so therefore we're not going to force parents who are traveling to then keep their kids home for 14 days. I know that was a question that was asked in advance so I wanted to bring that up again here. I mean if you travel then you know you're exposed to somebody. We just we're asking that you be honest with us okay so if you travel then you were exposed or you're not feeling great when you come back from your trip or somebody that you were with when you were on the trip or in the in, wherever you went is now not feeling well just be mindful of that. It's not just you that you're exposing that, you know, just keep your child home until you confirm that you don't, that you yourself don't have COVID or that person that you were exposed to doesn't have COVID. So that way we're just, we're minimizing any risk and we're minimizing bringing sick germs and sick children into the environment so that we can keep our other students and our more as healthy. Uh, and they have one more question. It's Shana again. Um, you mentioned something last time, I think, if I'm not mistaken, about the um, adjustment week or something like that, that the first week. Mm -hmm. Is that going to happen still? The transition week is only for our toddlers. We do have that. Um, okay. Transition just for our toddlers. Most of our twos, threes, and fours have already been in a program, and so we don't do a transition for them unless a parent wants it, and then we're flexible. But yes, our toddlers do have a transition week, whereas 
The two, threes, and four start with a regular full day on Monday morning. Our toddlers have a, for the Monday is from nine to 11. They only have a two hour drop off. On Tuesday, they have three hours, so it's nine to 12. And then on Wednesday, they go into a full day. So we just, we just transition them a little bit slower to give them that opportunity to enjoy school and not spend a full day overwhelmed in the program. Okay. So uh, it's Cynthia again. Can you repeat in the toddler class, it's, it's going to be the same, uh, just two moras? Two moras, eight kids. <clears throat> eight yes. kids, okay. They don't have pods. They have their full classroom. Okay. Andy, hi, yeah. Dean again. Yes. But, uh, you guys were open all summer. Now summer camp is finished, and you were doing all the same protocol, and thank God everything was okay, right? We were open for four weeks of summer. We didn't do a full full summer. We did a four week session and we were doing, um, the only thing that we didn't do is the pods. We did have everything else. We had smaller class capacity. We were doing the health checks. We were doing all the sanitizing, the hand washing, the temperature checks in the morning. And thank God we had no cases to report and no closures. Okay. Yeah. Again, that was a four week window. I can't promise that's going to be the same or not. And, and, and the, the goal here is not to not have anybody get COVID. That's not the goal. The goal is to minimize exposure, minimize exposure in case there is a case. And there may be, I mean, we had one of our Moras, one of our Moras tested positive in her, when we did the testing before we started teacher in-service week, she tested positive. She had no symptoms, wasn't feeling sick at all, no fever, completely asymptomatic, but her test came back positive. So she spent the week and a half of teacher in-service at home and she's doing her 10 day quarantine and she'll join us when that's over. Um, so there, there will be cases, some of them will be asymptomatic, some of them will have symptoms, but we will be on top of each of them and we'll deal with them accordingly and hopefully we won't have to close too many classes for too long and we can continue to operate as, as much as possible. And if, if someone tests positive, whether child or teacher, uh, I know because you just said 10 days, but some people continue to show a positive test over 10 days, so are you going to require like two negative tests so previous the, or so the, it depends on the situation um uh, an asymptomatic case does not have to retest and get a negative result they just have to do the 10-day quarantine i am actually having my teacher retest anyways but um they don't require an, a negative test to come back as long as they do their 10 to 14 day quarantine after their symptoms have passed so they have to wait for their symptoms to to, to you know until there's no more symptoms because she had no symptoms to begin with, her quarantine just had, was a 10 day quarantine. But it would be different if she had symptoms and we would wait till those symptoms were over and then start the quarantine then. Hold on, it's 10 days from when they start having symptoms or, yeah. or after they stop having symptoms? 10 days from after they stop having symptoms from a positive test result. Yeah. Oh wow, that, that's how long it's contagious? Uh, that, it's not contagious that long, but that's how long they want you to wait so that you're no longer contagious by the time you get back into society. I think it's only contagious for the first few days, but we, they do 10 days just to be absolutely certain. Okay. Andy, hi, it's Yael Garanti. Hi, how are you? Did you hear yes. my answer about travel? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if I missed this because I joined late. Um, what's gonna happen with the kids that don't nap? Because you used to have a little room for them, but... Yes. So there's no longer going to be an awake room. We did mention, we did talk to the teachers about uh, creating within the, our teachers know that there's not going to be breaks necessarily outside of the classroom this year because we're limited in staff space and we, we don't have common areas. We don't want them mingling with each other in staff break rooms. And we also need them in the, in the classroom environment because there's only one teacher on each side. Um, so we are going to have them do quiet, quiet time in the classroom with them. So they'll have uh, activities um, or toys to play with. Um, they might put a video on once the kids are napping for the kids who don't nap. But they will be creating their own little awake space with the kids in the, inside the classroom environment. Okay, thanks. Andy? Welcome. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I also didn't hear if you spoke about after school program. Karen? Yeah. yeah. So right now we are not having school finishes at 3.30 and we're not having any after school activities currently because we cannot mingle the, the grades with each other. Every pod has to stay separated and we can't do after school activities that way because- I, I wasn't asking about activities that I have heard. 
I was asking care. about say again aftercare uh-huh okay so the same the answer is the same that there's not going to be aftercare because again we can't combine classes together with one mora to do aftercare because right. then we're we're undoing the pods and we're we're um exposing them to new groups right okay so we're currently not doing aftercare until things um, so part okay. one starts at 3.15, ends at 3.30. We do give a five-minute leeway if you're running late to 3.35. But then everyone needs to get picked up, and we hope that still we can, we can change that and we can offer all the activities and aftercare and pre care and all that great stuff that we normally have. Thank you. And if I want to take her before carpool time? Just give me a call outside, and I'll go get her from the classroom. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else wanted to ask anything? I know this sounds overwhelming on this chat, but you'll see once you get into the classroom how, how comfortable it feels and looks. And um, once the kids are in there and having a great time, they're, they're you know what, they're, kids are adaptable and they, they learn quickly about new environments and new things. And maybe it sounds like overwhelming for us that they're gonna have two groups within the same classroom, they're gonna see each other on the other side and they're not gonna understand that concept, but they do. They will, and um, and and we're gonna make sure that they understand it well, and and make sure that they have their friends within their class environment, so things are gonna run smoothly. So, give it a give it a few a few days, let the kids get adjusted, and then you can always reach out to me if there's concerns you have or things that we can change or do better. You can always let us know. We're open to hearing suggestions on how we can always improve the situation and improve how we run things in the school. Um, and I think that's that's it because everybody is. Anyone else have questions? I see hands raising, but I think I I've covered me. that. Okay, me, please. with me, Who Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> How are you? Good, thank God. <laughs> um, I have a question for the carpool, like in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, can you repeat again that part? We need to um get out of the car and. Uh, give it the child to the moras right you're going to basically get to unbuckle your child from the car seat or booster seat that they're in and and hand them off to the mora so whether it's going to be because they're standing and walking to the mora because they're old enough or if they're a baby and they need to be handed over to the mora's arms you're going to do it that way um that way the teachers are not going into your car unbuckling your car seats and and buckles within your car and then the same thing in the afternoon, the teacher is going to bring the child from the classroom to your car and hand your child to you. And then you're going to buckle your child into the car. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I think we covered it all. I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow and Friday um, and, uh, and getting to know all of the new parents that are here and re-meeting everybody that's been in our school. We miss you all. And uh, please be in touch with us. Keep in touch. Come to the office. See us. See Mushki. See myself. We'll all be there and we'll direct you into the right classrooms and we'll help you out with anything you need. And, uh, and that, with that, I'll conclude. And we'll see you all. I look forward to uh, an exciting orientation and first day of school. Thank you, Andy. Bye, thank thank you. you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you.